Hi guys, welcome to the third module of the Binance African Newbie course. I'm still saving your anchor for this course. And in this module, we'll be talking about some fundamentals of blockchain and crypto. So it's actually important that you get a background on what you know blockchain and cryptocurrencies is all about as a beginner. This actually sets your foundation right in this ecosystem. All right. So let's get started. Remember. Links um, to resources are going to be in the description of this video. All right, what is blockchain? Uh, we we'll call it blockchain because it consists of a chain of blocks. So, and um, you know, now let's imagine like you know a distributed database like ledger. Um, you, you can take it as you know this book or this document that contains you know records of things. Okay, you know, like the way we have like your Google Sheets. Okay, so with Google Sheet, someone you know can actually share um, that same sheet to someone, let's say in US. Okay, so they can actually you know impute information on that sheet. So it's kind of distributed for everyone that has access to it. So you can take you know blockchain as that, but blockchain is special. It's kind of different because it's actually able to you know code any type of data and it's open sourced. Okay, it's open to everyone. But, you know, there are certain criteria for blocks to be added in, you know, in other words, for, you know, information or, or for uh, records to be added onto that, you know, block or onto that sheet, okay? These informations are basically, you know, done through something we call mining, okay? So before information or any uh, record is actually added to the blocks, it has to be verified in some kind of way. So um, that is basically, you know, how, you know, uh, information is added to the blockchain. And then um, this leads me to, you know, another thing that is very, very special, you know, about the blockchain technology. Since, you know, the information they are verified, it actually promotes trust, okay? Because uh, it means that whatever information is being, you know, put into, you know, the blockchain cannot be reversed, okay? So it has to be verified, you know, by everyone that this is actually correct, okay? Let's say it will be send um adamo two dollars worth of bitcoin okay you know everyone has to verify that okay this transaction actually happened will be sent adamo um two dollars worth of bitcoin on so date okay and not three dollars on another date okay so that when this is verified it's been added on that block which you can take as you know a document or a ledger okay so that not tomorrow you know obi might say oh no i didn't send you two dollars i sent you three dollars there's no way of doing that because it has actually been verified and there's no way we can go back and change that because they you know that has already been added so this is just like a layman's you know understanding of what the blockchain is all about i don't want to um, bore you with you know the the whole technical I meaning just that's basically what the blockchain is as only implied blocks so have the first transaction the one after that will come after the one after that just like that so it means let's say for something like the bitcoin blockchain okay um we can actually go and see even the first transaction which is actually linked you know down down to the one that's actually been done right now as so we speak okay so you can see that you know the blockchain offers you know information a tamper proof uh, system you know for recording things let's talk about the features of the blockchain technology which i have mentioned some of them so it's peer-to-peer -peer. okay what this means is that there's no central authority there to to control the data so the data like i said is confirmed by the people okay so it's confirmed by everybody that these transactions are actually legit that this transition actually product, you know, before they actually you know, input in the blockchain. So that once it's imputed, which takes me to the second feature of blockchain, is immutable. It means that it can't be changed. What is there is there. Okay. So um, whatever information is there in the blockchain is not immutable. There's no way you can go back and change that particular transaction or that particular information. Okay. And also it's visible to everyone. Okay. Everyone can see it. Since it's pair to pair, it's verified by everyone, it's visible to everyone. Like I said, you can go back now and see the very first transaction that occurred on the Bitcoin, on the Bitcoin blockchain or the Ethereum blockchain or the you know the Binance, uh, the BNB chain. And these things actually, you know, make the blockchain authentic. Since the information there is not controlled by one person which you know is easy to corrupt one person or corrupt one system and it's immutable it can be changed okay or duplicated in any way and it's visible to everyone you can see that this actually promotes trust okay whatever system that 
you know, the blockchain technology is applied to, you know, ensures that that system is authentic, whatever information is on the block and that blockchain is actually authentic. So now let's talk about some blockchain use cases. So blockchain can pretty much be applied to anything. You know, I know it's predominantly used in the financial sector for transactions and other DeFi and other, but it has a lot of, you know, um, application. It has, you know, the remittance, you know, for recording transactions, you know, and uh, you have the decentralized finance, so can leverage the peer-to-peer, you know, system and the authenticity to actually, you know, uh, lend and, um, and borrow money, okay? So uh, it also can be used in the supply chain management, that's, you know, for integrating systems across borders, uh, you know, track orders and stuff like that. It can be used for data storage, which is very, very important. Since the data, you know, is actually available to everyone, it can be duplicated, it's authentic. You can actually use the blockchain for storing data, yes. It can even be used in the health sector for, you know, keeping records uh, of patients and stuff like that. So anyway, pretty much anywhere that you need data to be stored and you need it to be authentic, and then uh, you, you need it to be immutable, you know, like the features we just mentioned, blockchain can pretty much be applied in that system, okay? Which is what makes it awesome. And we're just in the beginning stages where it's, you know, predominantly used, you know, in the world of finance. With time, we're going to see it graduate, you know, into other sectors of our day-to-day, -day, you know, activities. So um, let's continue. Now let's talk about cryptocurrency. So um, cryptocurrency is just is a product of the blockchain. Okay, blockchain is the all father. Okay, from which every other thing proceeds. From. You have the finance aspect, which is cryptocurrencies, and also have other applications, which I just mentioned in the last slide. Okay, so now uh, cryptocurrency is basically a digital form of money that is protected by cryptography. Hence the name crypto. Currency, okay, so it can be duplicated uh, or destroyed, which is something it got from you know the blockchain, uh, which is basically you know where we actually build cryptocurrencies on. So it's distributed, is you know via a P2P network, which is also something it got from the blockchain technology. It's borderless, like I said, in blockchain, visible to everyone. Remember, cryptocurrency actually takes a huge part of this characteristics from the blockchain technology. So now, now what is Bitcoin? So Bitcoin was the first cryptocurrency, okay. It was actually, you know, it's also a digital form of money, okay? So Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency. So look at the hierarchy now. We have the blockchain technology, we have cryptocurrencies, and now we have, you know, Bitcoin and the likes of them, okay? So it's also transparent, uh, it's open source, you know, borderless and censorship resistant, okay? So just the same thing, you know, um, the same practices with blockchain technology, cryptocurrencies and all that. And it's actually scarce, which is a very important um, aspect of money, okay? So money needs to be scarce. It's scarcity that actually gives, you know, whatever, it's not just money. It's scarcity that gives assets, especially um, value, okay? So if, you know, we can basically pretty much go and make, you know, surplus of anything, which is, you know, what's, you know, happening in most cases with, you know, most uh, um, currencies, threat currencies, that means with time, the value of those currencies is going to, you know, are going to be depreciating, okay? But Bitcoin actually solves that because Bitcoin is scarce because there can only be 21 million Bitcoins. And right now we're around the 18 to 19 million, you know, mark, okay? So once we reach to 21 million, you know, uh, Bitcoin in supply, we're supposedly going, not going to see any more Bitcoins being uh um, brought into the system, okay? So that's what we actually mean by saying Bitcoin is scarce. And it's believed that uh, um, reduced supply actually increases demand, which actually means Bitcoin, you know, is probably going to have, you know, more value as time goes on, okay? So this is basically what we're inferring. So now, let's look at how Bitcoin is very, very different from fiat money, which is, you know, sometimes already started mentioned here. So um, with fiat money, your fiat currencies, your fiat currencies are your NGN, your GHS, your, you know, whatever currency you use in that country that's, you know, been set as a legal tender in that current uh, region, okay? So it's centralized, as you know, it's governed by the government through the central bank or the reserves, as, you know, as some countries call it, okay? It has an unlimited supply, which means the government can basically print as many of that fiat money or even, you know, um, um, print as many of it in as digital money. Yes, that's also a thing. So, you know, the digit is in your apps, okay? So that's also it, you know, so those is just some of them can actually be manufactured. So basically what you're saying is there's a limited supply. There is no cap to say, okay, this is the amount of, uh, let's say, the engine that can ever be in the system, okay? So, um, and transactions are largely sensible, okay? So, you know, maybe let's say you want to send money from here, 
from Nigeria to let's say another region or let's say to the United States or whatever, the government can come in and say, okay, um, we want to censor this. What is this all about? And when you're not going to send this on this particular day, or you're not going to send a particular a certain amount, okay? So that is it. That is the main characteristics of the fiat money. Whereas with Bitcoin, which is the difference between two of them, Bitcoin is decentralized. No one actually owns Bitcoin. Yes, Bitcoin has a founder, Satoshi Nakamoto, but he doesn't control Bitcoin, okay? It's actually it's actually peer-to-peer. -peer. Bitcoin is peer-to-peer. -peer. It's actually, you know, um, transactions on the Bitcoin network is actually confirmed and mined by the people, okay? And transactions also occur peer-to-peer -peer from persons to persons. I have Bitcoin. I can exchange it and send it to someone else that needs bitcoin okay so it's censorship resistant meaning you know there's no limits to, to the amount of bitcoin you can send you no know, the time you can send it also or where you can send it to so um that's also a good thing and most importantly which is something i mentioned in the last slide it has a limited supply of 21 million okay so that's actually what you know we suppose is going to give bitcoin more value as time goes on okay so this is basically the main difference between the fiat currency as you know and a crypto a good cryptocurrency like bitcoin so now let's talk about you know who created bitcoin like i mentioned you know bitcoin was created by a pseudonymous uh, computer scientist satoshi nakamoto who we don't know who you know he or she or they it could be one person it could be two persons it could be a man it could be a woman but we don't know okay or we just know that this person uh, who goes by this name uh, actually created this awesome cryptocurrency from the blockchain technology and basically no one has heard from him or her or they again okay so it's basically also the creator of the blockchain technology which is um, what resulted to cryptocurrencies and bitcoin as we know it now he actually created this as a solution to double spend problem to the issue of printing money to unlimited supply of money to you know, inflation and all that, okay? So um, this actually happened um, right around, you know, when the financial crisis of 2008, 2009 occurred, okay? So this, you know, we all believe that um, actually prompted Satoshi Nakamoto to create his kind from the blockchain technology. And he launched, and uh, he or she or they, um, that's what I'm going to be using for, for um, Satoshi, um, launched Bitcoin in 2009 and pretty much disappeared, like I mentioned. So, I think that's basically for the best. <laughs> so now let's talk about the relationship between Bitcoin and blockchain. So blockchain is a distributed database where chunks of data are bundled together into blocks, okay? So you can say, you know, uh, and this is basically a spreadsheet where, you know, information is basically arranged and tied to each other, okay? So these blocks are chained together to form a blockchain, which has a limit like block and chain that chain together as a database the blockchain technology has many use cases and bitcoin is one of those applications of technology so like i said you have the, the blockchain and you have cryptocurrency like bitcoin so it proceeds from the blockchain technology okay so bitcoin is not just blockchain bitcoin is within you know it's actually an application of the blockchain technology it's very very important to know that so now let's talk about why bitcoin is you know useful okay so bitcoin can serve as an alternative investment um, class member not what we say here is actually financial you know um uh, financial advice okay we don't give financial advice we only educate you here but it is believed that because of the scarce nature of bitcoin and the demand for it, the relation between the supply and the demand, we actually infer that it can actually serve as an alternative investment class for storing value, okay? So we can also use it as a medium of phase change. I can actually use it for payments, as you can see with the Binance app, you can actually send some Bitcoin for a, a goods or service. You can actually use it to subscribe, buy time, pay for cabs on the Binance app, do, you know, the day-to-day -day things you do with, you know, your, your fiat currencies, okay? So it's, yes, and this one is actually can qualify as a medium of essence, can qualify as money as you know it. So now let's talk about altcoins. So now an altcoin is basically any coin that is not Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is the main cryptocurrency, the first cryptocurrency, and every other cryptocurrency as you know it is an altcoin, including Ethereum, BNB. Everything that is not Bitcoin is basically an altcoin. An altcoin basically comes from alternative. So let's talk about coins and tokens. Yes, you must have been coins, you must have been tokens. You know, two of them are being uh, jumbled together most times. So coins are the native assets of a blockchain. So Bitcoin for the Bitcoin network, Ethereum for the Ethereum network, BNB for the BNB smart chain, okay? But tokens are built on another blockchain. So tokens are cryptocurrencies that are kind of patching on another blockchain, okay? So let me give you an example. You have, you know, the cake, okay, the pancake token, you know, on the BNB 
you know, um, smart chain, okay? So it's not, it's a cryptocurrency, but it doesn't have a blockchain of its own. It's actually on another blockchain, the BNB chain, smart chain. So in this case, um, the cake is a token, okay? But BNB, which is actually the native token of that blockchain, but the BNB smart chain is a coin, okay? So what not? So tokens are more flexible and tokens can be categorized into different times, okay? So uh, um, uh, the flexibility of tokens actually make them have many use cases. You can use them for transactions, governance, utility, you know, security, equity. So there are a lot of things you can just create a token to be on a blockchain to do. You can create a token for buying NFTs. You can create a token for, you know, governance on a particular DAO that's decentralized autonomous organizations and all whatnot. So these tokens are basically, you know, built to, you know, serve a certain purpose or something like that. Yes. And that's basically, you know, where we come to the end of this. I believe you've learned a lot from this and it's been quite a, a long one, but I believe you plenty a lot. So um, I'll see you in the next module, guys. Thanks.